Hello and welcome. Today we will tackle a new topic. We are going to introduce the topic inflation and unemployment. Inflation and unemployment. So these are two things, inflation and unemployment. So we start by uh, discussing inflation. Inflation, we'll start by studying uh, inflation. We're going to define what do we mean by inflation, how can inflation be measured, and the causes of inflation, and so on. So, but before we do that, just as a reminder, when we are studying demand analysis and, and, uh, and uh, supply analysis, remember we said that the, the total demand for households, households, and uh, businesses, businesses including the government, we give rise to what we termed as the aggregate, aggregate demand. And the total supply for households, businesses, and government, we give rise to aggregate supply. And um, at equilibrium, at equilibrium price, we say that at the equilibrium price, the demand is equal to supply. Okay, in this case, total demand will be equal to the total supply. But where there is a difference or where there is um, excess supply for example if we have excess supply of goods or as compared to the demand or where there is excess demand as compared to excess as compared to uh, supply then a scenario will arise where we have surplus, either surplus or shortage of commodities in the economy. Shortage of commodities in the economy. And remember we say that excess demand, excess demand would lead to pressure on the price where we have excess demand then there will be pressure on the price. That means that price will increase, will lead to increase in price, okay, where there is excess demand. But where there is excess supply, then the supplier will be under pressure to reduce the price. So that will lead to decrease in, in price. So that should be understood. This is what we covered. We say that excess demand will lead to increase in prices. Because the moment the uh, suppliers would realize that there is high demand for a certain product, they are likely to increase it so that those who will be able to afford can buy it because there is demand. But when there is excess um, uh, excess supply. In case of excess supply, then uh, suppliers may be forced to lower the price so as to uh, attract the customers to buy. So as to attract the customers to buy. I'm talking, introducing this because what we had to discuss is related to uh, uh, what we discussed earlier. Remember, we we're talking about the price. Okay? We're talking about the price. So, 
that is what we covered last time. We said that uh, excess demand creates an upward pressure on price, while excess supply creates downward pressure on price. So an upward pressure on price leads to general rise in prices. It leads to general pr rise in prices and um, a general rise in the price of goods and services occurs when aggregate demand is higher than aggregate supply. Okay? And this condition where there is general rise in the price level in the economy, the general price level in the economy is what is referred to as inflation. Is what we are referring to as inflation. So that is generally the meaning of inflation. So inflation refers to a general and persistent increase in prices of all commodities within an economy. Okay? General and persistent increase in prices. You need to note that. General and persistent okay in uh, of prices in all prices of all commodities okay when the trend is upward when every product uh, every uh, every product there's an increase in price in every product every sizes general economy there is a, a, an increase persistent increase in all the prices that is when we can term that as inflation. So, um, and from this definition, there are two things that are coming out very clearly. Number one, that uh, this definition defines inflation as an ongoing process of rising prices and not discrete jumps or one period changes in the price level. So, persistent so under inflation when you're talking about price changes persistent you are not talking about prices increasing one month then stagnant the other month the other day the prices are stable no we're talking about every time every time continuously january february march you can observe a general increase in prices so that is one feature of uh, of um, uh, inflation that is persistence we are not talking about one-off increase in price then another thing that comes out clearly from this definition is that it defines inflation as a general rise in prices of all products as opposed to the rise in the price of in the price of one particular product so we are talking about general that means all it is not a particular product but all the products uh, experience uh, the persistent increase in prices. So those are two important points. Number one, under inflation, we are talking of general. Number two, is the, there is the element of persistence. It's not a one-off event. So that is inflation. So a general increase in prices in the economy will cause the purchasing power or the value of money to fall will cause the purchasing power or value of money to fall. For example, if the cost of bread in January is equal to say 40 shillings. In February, this price jumps to say 65 shillings. In March, there is also an increase of these to say 70 shillings. So you see now, we are saying inflation reduces the purchasing power of money. So if you had, if you had 40 shillings in January, these 40 shillings could enable you buy a loaf of bread. Okay? the power, the 40 bob. This 40 bob in January 
had the power to purchase a loaf of bread. With 40 bob, you could go to a shop and exchange the 40 bob with a loaf of bread. But if you are to go to the same shop in February with your 65 shillings, then these 40 shillings will not have the power to purchase this loaf of bread at this point in time. So you see now between January and February, there is a loss in the purchasing power of money of say 15 shillings. So that the, the 40 bob in January, the 40 bob in January, the power is equivalent to say 65. Okay? That is uh, uh, the power, the purchasing power is eroded, it's being eroded under inflation. Because remember, inflation is the persistent, general and persistent increase in prices of commodities. So due to the persistent increase, here it's persisting. So if there is this increase of prices, then the, it has an effect of eroding the strength of money, the power, purchasing power of money. That's what we mean when we say that um, the purchasing power or the value of money falls. Okay? So that is what is the impact of inflation because an increase in the prices of a few goods and services does not in itself indicate that there is inflation. It is the general and persistent increase in price that constitutes inflation. That constitutes inflation. So, and... Uh, the opposite can be termed as deflation, which refers to a fall in the general level of prices of goods and services. Okay? It refers to a situation where there is a trend for general prices of goods and services to fall. Okay? So that is um, what we mean by inflation. That is the meaning of inflation. Now, we will now turn to discuss um, how to measure inflation. How do you measure inflation? Now, inflation is measured by observing the change in the price of a set or basket of goods and services between two or more periods. Hence, to measure inflation, we need to compare prices of a given set of or bucket of goods and services between two or more periods. The prices of goods and services are combined to give a price index. Measuring an average price index that is the average level of prices of a set of products. And the most commonly used index is the consumer price index that relates the prices of a basket of goods and services over two or more years. Okay, so this index shows the order of magnitude of the price change or the inflation rate okay so you measure you can measure inflation by observing by observing the level of changes in price of commodities over a given period of time so what happens, you take products, basket of products that are consumed by the people. So you'll have, you'll have, you'll have a basket. And in this bucket, you'll have products like, say, uh, milk, 
you will have products like uh, sugar, flour, okay, airtime. You can also put the cost of, say, border border, border border, okay, the prices that are generally consumed. That's why we are saying we use the consumer price index. Thank <music> you.